is Borough Community Media. We're at the Huzzy School with Tina Harding, who is the principal and has been for the last several years, and Mike Roberts, who started here this year. Brand but, new. Yes. Brand new. I've been on campus for a couple weeks. Brand new. However, you've been at the middle school for quite some time. Yeah, about the last 20, and this is year 34 in the district. So I've been around for a while. Around for a while. I've seen a lot of familiar families. Yeah. Um, so we're here today to learn a little bit about the Huzzy School start and how things are going. Can you tell us how the year started, Tina? I think it started out great. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of kids have been excited to be back. Um, teachers are excited to have them. We were ready. We're ready to go. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, busing, has there been any problem with busing at all? No. Um, the buses have been, we have buses go smoothly. Um, they're usually done by 340 or something. The kids are eager and doing well on them. Okay. Yeah, and what's really nice is the bus drivers are really good about knowing their students, knowing their kids, and helping them out, and our staff here. So there's a, it's been pretty smooth going, but a lot of it is just safety reasons, and I think the bus drivers know their kids by now. Uh -huh. So 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 far, there's been no stories, so I think we've been okay. <laughs> Fantastic. We like that. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of schools in uh, the state have hired a lot of new staff. Um, did you find that you had to hire new staff this year, or um, did a lot of them return? We have about four new teachers to the district. We have a new kindergarten garden teacher, a Miss Carr. We have a first grade teacher, Miss Batchelder, and then two second grade teachers, Miss um, Talbot and Miss Reynolds. We also have a new nurse this year, which yep. is exciting because she's a noble graduate. We're excited to have her. So we have a new, new nurse, secretary. Carrie Fleming, and a secretary, Julie Rothstein. So we have some new hires. Okay. Well, that sounds like yeah. quite a few, actually. Well, we are still <laughs> looking for others. So yeah. as we all oh, know, that was going to be my next yeah, question. Um, yeah, ed techs and some. Uh, yeah, there's still some openings um, definitely here that we. We're good, but we still could use a couple more staff. And what's the requirement for ed techs these days? Well, Tina knows more. There's three different categories, but most okay. of it is any sort of schooling um, and some experience, hopefully, with the with the age group or what we're looking for, whether it be regular education or special ed. But for the most part, um, people would qualify probably easier than they realize. And that, I know district-wide, K-12, to I think all buildings could use some more help. Okay. Um, and so even if they don't want a Monday through Friday type job, we are always looking for substitutes also. Yeah which is okay. a great job, yeah. Okay, um, so what's new at the school this year? What type of programming have you instituted this year that's new for the kiddos? We have, um, it's not really new, but we're doing Eureka Squared. We, it's a new, it's an addition, an update from our previous one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we still have our um, flex grouping, our same writing programs, the other programs are the same. Okay. So those are going well. Um, programming wise, I think that's all we have for programming. Oh, we do, we are starting PBIS this year. So all the elementary schools in our district are doing PBIS. I think Knowlton is on its second year, but it's our first year. It's a behavior support system, so we're excited about that. Okay, fantastic. And can you tell me a little bit about special programs for after school things for this age level? Have we got anything for that? Um, we hope this year to get back to some of the things we used to do. We used to do after school clubs like Lego Club and other things the teachers would do. In the previous, in the recent years, we had to stop, but we are eager to be able to offer some of those. Last year and this year, we did. Last year we had a math camp, which we will have again this year with Miss Wilson, and we'll see what else we can get going. Fantastic. Yeah, I've even heard a rumor of a math arcade that might be coming to uh, to us. I mean, thanks to Kerry Wilson and some other people. So the, okay. we'll have to wait and see uh, for the kids. Right. I would like to tell them, Tina's the expert. I'm still learning uh, what's going on here. And um, so I'll, she's good about the uh, the programs that we think will, we have our Y care in the morning and in the afternoon for okay. to help the kids and the families out. Uh, but a lot of it will be um, um, down the road, I think. Okay. <clears throat> and is there anything special? How can parents keep involved. What what can they do to stay involved with kids at this age? We're really hoping to get back our parent volunteers. I think we've lost that in because of, you know, COVID and other issues before, but we're excited to get some parent volunteers back in. We'd love to have parents helping out in our literacy time, our writing, just reading with kids. And we used to have parents come in too that had skills to share. I think our kids would benefit from that a lot. So if you're interested or reach out to your teacher or call the office, Mike and I would love to talk to you. We are eager to have volunteers back in our schools. And I found out that most of our staff, whether it be individual teachers or grade level teams will reach out and communicate to families Families, whether it's a weekly newsletter or um, just a, a certain emails to certain groups and our special interventionists will do that as well. So keep checking your email because there's always a lot of information coming from our staff. 
Okay, fantastic. Is there anything more that you would like our viewers to know about the Hussey School, about the programming, or? I know there's a, been a lot of work, as, as we all know, a pretty short summer. We get out, what, on the 23rd, or it was one of the later years for us yeah. that I've been around. Uh, but I know there's been a lot of work on campus. Uh, Ms. Harding might know that we really, we're finishing up some projects, but we're getting right. close. It's, okay. it's been a busy summer. We had, um, we're having some HVAC work done and air going in. It wasn't ready last week for the heat wave, but just think of how great it's going to be in the summer and for next year. So we do have central air going in. We also had a new sign put in this summer. Our PTO used some of our fundraising money from the Muddy Mile and purchased a new sign for the Hussey School. So we've been busy with a lot of that going on in the building. Okay. And I've had a lot of fun as the new person here, thanks to the students and the optimism and their positivity and working with Tina has been great and the staff. So as someone that's pretty uh, experienced in the district, coming here for the first time, um, I'm really enjoying myself and a lot of that is just because of the smiles of the kids and uh, it's it's nice. They're a little a little smaller than I'm used to, yeah. uh, but, it, but it's been fun. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we thank you for taking time with BCM this morning and we thank appreciate you. your sharing with our viewers some of the new stuff that's happening at Hussey School. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm Terry Wright with Berwick Community Media, and we're here today with Michelle Keniston, who is the principal at the Knowlton School and has been for the last six years. We're looking at what's been going on this year, Michelle. Well, we've started the school year strong. We have welcomed just about 230 students into our building this year. We have um, 88 fourth grade students, and I think I think the number is 138 fifth grade students and our fourth graders are all from Berwick and our fifth graders are from the towns of Berwick and North Berwick. Wow. Um, so let's see, we uh, have some new things happening here behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the project? So two years ago, all of this behind me was woods um, and it was really unusable for our students and also broke up the sight line from the upper playground to the lower playground. And our PTO has been working for two years to raise money, organize volunteers and a lot of hard work um, and has created a natural playground for us that the kids absolutely love. So there's a path that they love to jump from, from um, stump to stump across. We have an area that they can build forts with, with sticks that we keep for them. Uh, we have lots of fairy house building right now. That's been very popular this spring. Uh, and most recently, we they've put in this lovely garden for us. Um, so lots of fun and it's nice to have a little a little love from the community yeah. into our school. Yeah. Okay, um, so this was obviously a big project for the PTO and I understand that the PTO now is actually all of the schools um, in Berwick, is that correct? Yes, so they are now um, helping out Hussey School, Knowlton School, and at the middle school. So I know that they are actively looking for, for more help. So if people are interested in um, that, we would love to have more people on the PTO. Uh, we also had an inside project this summer. Okay, great. Uh, recently we have had the floor in the entire first floor, um, the hallway and the cafeteria has been redone. So that looks great. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you about projects, so you took care of that for me. Thank you very much. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about how parents can stay involved when kids start to, as they go through the system, I know that parents say, what can we do? How can we help? How can we keep involved? Fourth and fifth graders still love to have their parents come into school. So if we have parents that have time or talents that they would like to share, they can contact me directly. Um, any opportunity 
to bring in something that maybe we don't provide here, something to show and tell about. Um, we've had parents come in to help raise chickens last year, um, very popular. Um, but we would love to have anybody who has something to offer, um, they can contact me directly or your child's teacher. Great, thank you. Um, and what type of activities do they have for the Knowlton School as far as what can kids get involved in and what should parents be aware of? Most of the activities that happen at this age are still done through Berwick Rec, so that um, the sports and such goes through there. But at Knowlton School, since we have fifth, uh, fourth and fifth graders, our students are constantly coming up with their own clubs and um, our staff is amazing about that. So don't be surprised if your child comes home and suddenly wants to be part of a Rubik's Cube Club or a chess club or we've even had Pokemon clubs um, and generally it's kid driven and then they find a staff member and we'll run it for a couple weeks after school and the kids really love it especially since it's generally their idea. Wonderful. I know you used to put on um, plays and um, those were a lot of fun. Um, so staffing. I know a lot of other schools are having trouble with staffing um, and finding people to take positions. Is this something that has affected Knowlton as well? Thankfully, we did not have um, much changeover in teaching staff this year. So that's been amazing. Uh, we had Rachel Putnam come back to us. Uh, so kind of new, but certainly familiar with our school. Um, we are still looking for a couple of support staff positions and um, building sub positions. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking time with Borough Community Media today. We appreciate you. Is there anything that you would like uh, residents or parents to know about the Knowlton School or about what's going on here? So one of the things that we've been working really hard on for the last two years is a, uh, a project that um, we're in a cohort with several schools from all across the state, from as far north as Fort Fairfield, um, with the Department of Education and the UMaine system. And what we have been working on is implementing a positive behavior intervention and supports, um, known as PBIS. And that's really a framework for creating uh, safe, positive, and equitable schools. So the idea really is, and the goals are making sure that we are clearly communicating expectations with students, that we're rewarding frequently students for things that they do well and recognizing them for that, and then that we have systems in place for supports when students need it. So that is one thing that we're working on um, hard with staff on this year and we'll continue. It's a part of a three-year cohort. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you for uh, talking with BCM today and we wish you a wonderful year. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Terry Wright with Borough Community Media, and I'm here today with Michael Archambault. Michael was the principal at the North Berwick Elementary School for many years, and this year he transferred over to the Noble Middle School. Michael, can you tell us how the year started out? Yeah, Terry, thank you very much. We are really off to a great start. Uh, kids are really happy, lots of laughter, smiling, seeing their friends in the hallways. Uh, teachers are getting their rooms ready. A great staff this year, really excited about the work the team's going to do. The custodial maintenance staff over the summer, just a ton of work. Transportation is just a total team effort here at Noble Middle School. We're really excited to start the year. Well, that's great to hear, Michael. Um, can you tell us how you're doing with staff? I know that some of the schools have had difficulty finding staff, and have you been able to fill all the positions? Yeah, a little bit of peaks and valleys. We, uh, the staff that we've hired, we've been super fortunate. We have a really talented new group of people. Uh, we also have a lot of staff who are new to just us at Noble Middle School. People have transitioned from different schools in our district. Uh, we still do have some jobs out there. We have a permanent building sub, which is uh, somebody who comes in. They're a staff member. They're here every single day. And then they sort of, they, they uh, 
are kind of our wild card. They do some coverage when uh, we need need some spots filled, and we also have uh, some ed tech positions that are really pretty tricky to fill, and, and we're looking for some talented individuals who want to join the team. That's great. Now, I know that the schools all needed a little bit of work done over the summer. Um, can you kind of fill us in on what the work was done here at the middle school? Yeah, it's really exciting. So um, our kitchen got some upgrades. We got new a new refrigerator and a new freezer, which were really needed here. Um, also, we just finished phase one of a pretty big HVAC project. Our school is from the 60s, and so these are upgrades that have needed to happen to work on ventilation, uh, heating, and air conditioning. So thank you. Okay. Um, now I know that as kids age out and, and get a little older in school that parents find a hard time getting involved. Can you tell me how parents might get, stay involved with kids at the middle school? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, every student at Noble Middle School is part of a team. And so we have, seven, we have seventh grade teams and sixth grade teams. And really what that helps to do is to help parents connect directly with a specific set of teachers and also the, our teachers know their students really well and are reaching out pretty regularly uh, through newsletters and team emails, things like that. So if you would like to be involved, if you have the time or if you have some, just some availability um, and would like to just be a part, please reach out to your team. And if you uh, want to do some things for the greater school, please call us at the office. We're always looking for uh, substitutes, but also people coming in and uh, mentors for students. Those things are really important. What type of activities do you have going for the middle school students this year? So we have a, a full slate of athletics. Um, so fall sports are kicking off. It's been a little tricky with the heat, uh, but that's going on. Band and chorus, we have an, like a really talented uh, directors on both sides of that. And so the, our musicians, our artists, uh, both performing and visual arts can be involved here. Uh, Actually, just outside of school, we have a color run that's coming up. It's, I believe it's October 17th. We're going to be doing a color run here, uh, sponsored by the Berwick PTO. So big shout out to them for putting that on. Okay. Now, I understand, just following up on that, that the Berwick PTO now is representing all of the schools as opposed to being just one one school in the district. Is that correct? That is correct. And what a huge uh, gift that is for Noble Middle School. We feel super fortunate. It's something that not a lot of middle schools have is a, a really robust PTO. And the Berwick PTO is just doing a great job, uh, full, full of really dedicated uh, citizens and uh, members of the Noble community. Fantastic. Is there anything else that you really like our viewers to know about Noble Middle School and um, what's going on here? Yeah, just really, really awesome uh, staff and community here. And I uh, just want everyone to know that I'm always accessible. Uh, there's a link on the website, things to say to Mr. A. You can leave comments on there, any suggestions, any, any sort of uh, commendations for staff members here or students. We really are looking to, to be the best that we can be. And uh, Noble Squires, we're really excited about that. So. Uh, speaking of that, the website had an uh, update. I've noticed that they changed a few things on there. It's a little easier to navigate. Yeah, the district has worked really hard to make sure that uh, our outreach to the community is, is getting better and better. So we definitely want feedback on that, but we are super excited. Uh, things are a lot more streamlined, easy to find. So if you do go on the website and have suggestions or things that might be uh, easier for you to find, please, we're looking for that feedback. We're just excited. Uh, to, to move in that direction and, and to be more accessible to the greater community. Great. Well, thank you for taking the time with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. school with AJ Dufour, the principal, and we're here to find out what's been going on with the schools this year, the students, and um, staffing. Um, AJ has been with the school for almost 20 years, and this is his third year as principal. So AJ, how did the school year start off for you? Yeah, we've had a really, really good start to the year. Obviously, the heat this week complicated things a little bit, but it really highlighted how good our students are, how good our staff is, that everyone was incredibly resilient. But it's great we got to have our eighth grade open house, and we've gotten to have our eighth grade orientation day. So that's always really exciting for everyone to welcome our, our newest students and be able to meet and talk with those eighth graders who are entering our building. 
Fantastic, that's good to hear. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's been done on the school this year as far as work? Absolutely. So yes, we've had some ongoing roof work happening here at the building. Our biggest project that's going on is HVAC work is being done and fingers are crossed that heating, we're going to be all set and we'll have some more um, consistent heating come this winter. So that is good. Um, a lot of smaller projects as well. We had some teachers that volunteered to come in and add a little painting update to our B gym, which is where a lot of our project adventure classes are held. Um, we have some new lunch tables, which is always exciting for students. So lots of little projects as well, but certainly a couple big ones too. I was going to say, I noticed the paving project out front. Yes, so the paving, um, and, and it's interesting, I think, for a lot of visitors and folks coming to the high school, that's one of the first things they'll see. But for most students and staff kind of being around the back, that's going to be a multi-year project. So it's nice to get that first phase in and continue to see that grow, because that certainly is something that needs regular upkeep all the time. <laughs> Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, so I know other schools have had problems with staffing and getting enough people on yeah. board. Can you tell us how that's worked out this year? Absolutely. So we've been very, very fortunate. I think we're lucky. Um, we have such a great staff. The reputation of having such a great staff really sort of precedes our group. So we have not had any real struggles with hiring. You know, certainly it is challenging maybe if in early to mid-August, someone decides to slide along to another position, you have that panicked moment of how are we going to fill A, B, or C, but we've been really lucky. We have had candidates for all positions, so we haven't experienced it to the same degree that some other districts have. Well, that's good to hear for a change. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, and let's see, one of the other things that we talked about was um, how do parents stay involved at this yeah. level? At the younger level, everybody's in the schools and they're seeing what's going on. But at this level, it's a little different. It is. Definitely it's different. So I think a couple of things are, and I think one thing that I, that I mentioned to the eighth grade families on that open house night is don't feel like because your student is in high school that you're supposed to let them go. That is certainly not the expectation, not the intent. Um, but I think sometimes as you change buildings, you know, sometimes the PTOs are a little less involved as students get older. So it feels like that's the expectation. I think for us, being able to attend those events like open house is huge. We have our open house for grades 9 through 12 on Tuesday night. Um, so having folks come out to that is fantastic. Being involved, like we have our athletics department is starting a Hall of Fame. And we'd really love to have family participation, former graduates, former athletes who want to be a part of that process to be involved. The other thing, although our staffing is really good, there are always openings as ed techs or in food service, really short windows of time sometimes that can accommodate many schedules. So having folks who are willing to come in and do that is really, really helpful. So anyone that's interested, please reach out, never hesitate to reach out. And I think we can find, find a spot for, for probably everyone. Um, and I know something else we may talk about, but is our extended learning opportunities. One area that is growing by leaps and bounds for us is sending students out into the work world. Um, so most correspondences that our families get from me always have a little disclaimer that, hey, if you or someone you know has a business or something you want to are willing to accept students, and I know it's hard sometimes, you know, there's a certain level of training or a certain age requirement, so that makes it tricky, but anyone who is willing to accept students, like, you'll find our, our students are great and they're willing to really engage in that work. So that's another area that folks can work directly with students where they already are, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Um, and obviously at the school, you've got loads of activities and things that are going on. Um, could you tell us, are those all staffed as well? I know yeah. football, soccer, yes. field hockey. Yeah, we're really fortunate with coaches and we're seeing an uptick in participation, which is great. So it has meant adding, um, I know at the middle school level, for example, added a soccer team. So kind of there's a sixth grade team and a seventh grade team and then added a combined team at that level and have been really lucky staffing all of those. And then I would say, you know, on the maybe more academic side of things, um, a lot of groups that are meeting and doing some really cool things. I think one I would highlight is our Noble Ambassadors, um, who is a group they actually gave a tour last night of the building to our school board, um, a really involved group and sort of their mission is to make sure that all students who are new to our building, are welcomed, are invited, feel like they're a part. So that's really, really cool. 
Um, so we have about 20 students who are really committed to that, which is great. Esports is up and running already, so kind of a multi-state champion teams that we have, which is really cool, brings a lot of pride to those kiddos. And I think what I'm most proud of is that group in particular has worked really hard to make in-person experiences. So we've hosted on weekends events where other schools will come. You know, a lot of people think of gaming, you're sitting in your room, you're by yourself, there's not interaction, but they do a really nice job of adding that peer interaction, which at this age and any age, I think is really important. Yeah, it is. Um, the other question I have for you is uh, busing. Um, yeah. I know that uh, a lot of schools are looking for bus drivers right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, how are we set on that? Yeah, I, I'm guessing we're looking. So if anyone out there is interested, um, I'm sure they'll take your name. But we're in pretty good shape. I think our daily run, so our students getting to and from school, we're OK. We're good. The tricky part comes in for those extracurricular activities. So when you only have just enough folks and then you have a four o'clock game at Bonnie Eagle, there's no way that someone can be doing their route to bring home elementary school kids, yep. which has to be that priority, along with getting you know a JV football team to Bonnie Eagle. So that's where it becomes tricky. So certainly, I think we are, we are a little short in that area. Right. Um, is there anything that you would like residents to know about the school and our positions you're looking for? Obviously, sure. we've talked about. But. Yeah. yeah, I think just having folks, you know, come on out. There are events, whether it's community events or school events happening. Gosh, right now it is probably a little slower with us getting back into it, but four or five nights a week anyways. So whether it's an outside dance group that's using our building or one of our teams that are playing, you know, it is going to be, I think, for on the athletic side of things, a really exciting fall. Mm -hmm. So definitely getting out and seeing, seeing our student athletes in action would be great. So, yeah, just finding ways to be on our campus. Um, and finding ways to reach out if there's something, you know, we have a good relationship with families reaching out, but I think it would be great if it's always more. So if there's something a kiddo needs, please let us know and we'll do everything we can to make it happen. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you for taking some time Absolutely. with BCM today. We appreciate that and uh, hopefully your year goes really well. Absolutely, thank you.